Way out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums. The principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the great lion, King Leonardo. Confounded, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. Odie Coloni, faithful servant of King Leonardo, was worried. The problem? King Leonardo had started walking in his sleep. For weeks now, King Leonardo had risen from his bed at precisely 11.05 each night. In a deep sleep, he had left the royal bedroom, walked down the royal stairs, and out into the night to promptly fall into the royal moat. Coming, sire! Coming! After dragging King Leonardo from the moat night after night, Odie Coloni had finally tried bolting the king's bedroom doors from the outside. But that night, King Leonardo had simply walked through the door. Down the royal stairs. And out into the night to promptly fall. Into the royal moat. Help! Help! Coming, sire! Coming! There seemed to be nothing which could be done to halt the king's nightly march to the moat. And Odie Coloni was worried. His worry would only have increased had he known what was happening at the hideout of Biggie and Itchy. My dog has fleas, and so do I. Jumper G-Man, this is it. Someone finally put an ad in the paper for us. Listen. Wanted. Crooks. Nasty, miserable, sneaky crooks. That's, that's all right, Big. It fits me to a T. So what are we waiting for? Let's head for the address in that ad. A short while later, Biggie and Itchy were entering a strange old house where they would meet a man who would greatly change their lives. The infamous Mr. Mad. <laughs> I am Mr. Mad. Did you come in answer to my advertisement? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We thought you might throw a little monkey business our way. Perhaps I can. You see, I am a collector. Yeah? Like, uh, what do you collect? Uh, stamps? Old bottle caps? Uh, bicycle spoke? People. I collect people. One of each type. <laughs> Here, for example, is an accountant type. And here is an advertising type. Oh, let's throw it in the bathtub and see if it floats. Put it in the toaster and see if it pops. And put it on the ice and see if it's... I have every type in the world, except one. Yeah, one? One? One. I have no king, no king at all. Do you by chance know King Leonardo? <laughs> <laughs> we know King Leonardo. Do we know? Silence. Answer my question. Okay, okay. Don't get mad, man. Sure, we know Kingsley. We uh, bump into him uh, all the time. Perfect. You shall get him for my collection, and then I shall be able to study his behavior. I shall find out how he stands up under weighty problems. I shall see how he responds to great shock. But most importantly, I shall see how he stands up under endless pressure. Uh, that looks like great fun, Mad. But how do we get the king? We've been trying a long time now, see, and, uh... My brains will capture him. I have the perfect plan. What is this perfect plan of the strange Mr. Mad? Will it truly succeed? And how will it involve King Leonardo's sleepwalking? We'll find out in our next exciting episode, Falling Asleep. Way out here.
yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums, the principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the Lion King Leonardo. Confounded, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. In our last episode, Odie Coloni was worried about King Leonardo, for the king had begun walking in his sleep. Sire, coming! Meanwhile, Biggie Rat and Itchy Brother were meeting the infamous Mr. Mad. <laughs> I am a collector. Yeah? Like, uh, what is it you collect? People. Mr. Mad explained that for his diabolical study of behavior, he had collected all types of people except one, a king. And he insisted that Biggie and Itchy capture King Leonardo. What's in a deal for us, Mad? One bongo buck per day, plus expenses. And if you fail to bring me the king... Yeah? What happens if we fail? Then I shall put you in... the room. Look, gentlemen. Look into... the room. Okay, we're convinced. Late that night, Biggie and Itchy began putting Mr. Mad's mad scheme into action. At precisely 10.50, Itchy brother swam quietly across the moat surrounding the palace. Next, Itchy went to a palace window and slipped quietly inside. <coughs> Once in the room, Itchy found the proper lever and let down the drawbridge carefully. At 11.03, Biggie Rat drove a truck across the drawbridge and parked beneath the king's window. At 11.05, King Leonardo began his nightly sleepwalking. But tonight, Itchy Brother turned the king so that he faced the open window. And good King Leonardo promptly walked out into space. He landed in the back of Biggie's truck. And minutes later, the two culprits were speeding away with the unconscious king. But unknown to Biggie and Itchy, a thread from King Leonardo's robe had caught on a nail, and the robe was unraveling to leave a trail of thread behind. At last, at last I have a king. What's the meaning of this? Confound it, who are you? I am Mr. Mad. I am introducing you to my collection. Collection? What do you collect? <laughs> I'm a stamp man myself. I collect people to study. How do they stand up under weighty problems? And how do they react to severe shock? And now? Now for the real test. How will a king stand up under endless pressure? Well, it looked like the breaking point for King Leonardo. But back at the palace, Odie Coloni had discovered the king's disappearance. And then the thread from the king's royal night robe. Guards, come with me quickly. Meanwhile, at the Mad Mr. Mads, we are ready for the supreme test. Stop! This is the most unheard of thing I've ever heard of! Silence! The test begins. Capture the intruders. But Mr. Mad had not reckoned with the swift thinking of Odie Coloni. Take this, you villains. The guards tied up the criminals, all but the infamous Mr. Mad, who disappeared as if by magic. <laughs> What new plot will Mr. Mad plot to collect King Leonardo? Don't miss the next exciting episode of The King and Ode. Way 
out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums, the principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the great lion king Leonardo. Confounded, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. King Leonardo was truly having his share of problems. First, True Blue Odie Colony had been suddenly called away to take care of a sick aunt. Left alone, King Leonardo began having problems almost at once. The palace laundry began piling up. Help! Guards! Help! In the kitchen, the royal dishes went unwashed. Confound it! Can't even find a clean cup. Hmm. I'll just get one from here and wash it myself. <laughs> help! Guards! Help! With Odie gone, dust went undusted in the throne room. <coughs> this is terrible. I must clean up this place. I can just get the royal vacuum. Plug it in. Help, guards! Help! Yes, the palace had never looked worse. And neither the king. It was at exactly this moment, wouldn't you know it, that the king's minister of publicity entered with a startling piece of news. I've done it, I've done it, your majesty, I've truly done it. Done what, confound it? Put Bongo Congo on television, your majesty. Network television in the U.S. of A. What? But how? What, what, what kind of a show will it be? A tour, sire. There was a tour of the White House, a tour of Monaco, and now... Yes. And now... Yes! Now it's a tour of the Bongo Congo Palace. Bravo! Oh, why, that's the most unimaginable thing ever imagined. No, oh, but, 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 but the palace, it, it's in terrible shape. What, what can we do? Have no fear, Your Majesty. I will personally say that the right people are hired to clean it from top to bottom. But now we must get to work rehearsing the TV tour. Uh, move that equipment uh, over there. Right in the head with the uh, lights over there. Confound it, who are these? Hey, uh, you pull my cable there, buddy. Watch it. Now see here, who are all these people? They're from the network, Your Majesty. And here is the producer and narrator of the show, Charles Hollywood. Hmm, no profile at all. In fact, not much of a face. Won't photograph well at all. Of course, it won't be so bad with the other members of the family around. We'll keep them on camera. Where are your children? Your children? I have no children. Oh, bad. Very bad. Where is your wife? I have no wife. Confound it. Oh, terrible. Just terrible. Well, surely your majesty must have an art gallery. Art, art you say? Oh, well, my collection is the pride of Bongo Congo. <laughs> Step this way. Now, this is Aristotle contemplating the bust of Leonardo the First. Ah. I've seen only one other like it. Yes, and this is the famous Mona Linetta posed by my great-grandmother. Striking resemblance. And this? Confounded! What have they done? Why, it's the king's twin nephews, Duke and Earl. Splendid, and twins at that. We must have them on the show. Oh, no. no those, those two are monsters. The most unmanageable brats ever managed. Please, don't say that. You'll ruin your image. Just refer to the children as little darlings. All right. But these little darlings are brats. But Charles Hollywood insisted on the nephews, and the king finally gave in. Will the king's nephews, Duke and Earl, really be as bad as the king expects? And who are those two familiar figures being hired to clean up the palace? And with all this, can the King's TV tour possibly be a success? We'll find out in our next episode, A Tour de Passe. Way 
out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums, the principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the great lion King Leonardo. Confounded, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. In our last episode, Odie Coloni was away from the palace and King Leonardo was having trouble. And just at this time, the Minister of Publicity had arranged for an important television tour of the Bongo Congo Palace. All right, uh, move that equipment uh, move those in over there. Right in here, put the uh, lights take over the there. there and throw it in. The producer and narrator of the show, Charles Hollywood, insisted that children be included to add a touch of warmth. And so it was decided to use the king's nephews, Duke and Earl. Oh no, those two are monsters. Meanwhile, two familiar figures had been hired to clean up the palace. Ah, uh, we'll clean up, all right. While everybody's busy with this TV tour, we'll be stealing the royal gold. Ah, uh, what a sap Kingsy will look like when the TV audience sees that. While Biggie and Itchy hurried to the gold room, the king's nephews had arrived in the game room. <laughs> Oh, dear, Your Majesty, this is no time for games. Your program is ready to start. You wait in the game room, Earl. I'm Duke. That's Earl, folks. <laughs> and now, to take us on a tour of the Bongo Congo Palace, here is our host, King Leonardo. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hollywood. Uh, where are we now, Your Majesty? In the palace. But where in the palace? No, oh, this is the art gallery. And directly beneath us are my nephews in the... And these must be your darling nephews. Yes, these are my darling nephews. This is Earl. I'm Duke. That's Earl, folks. <laughs> I'm certain you children must enjoy playing with your Uncle King. Sure, we play horsey like this. Ow! Ow! Right, cowboy, yippee! While the TV tour continued, Biggie and Ditchie were hot at work. We almost got the safe open edge. <laughs> when that TV tour reaches this room and finds the gold gone, Kingsley will look more like a monkey's uncle. But King Leonardo, unaware of this foul play, continued the tour. Now, you youngsters, run along and play. We'll see you later. And uh, what room is in there, Your Majesty? Uh, the blue room. I see. Has it always been the blue room? No, but last year a bad storm blew off the roof. And when it blew off the roof, you called it the Blue Roof. Yes, and we decided to keep it just as it is. And I see this room is named the Orange Room. I suppose <laughs> that's where you keep your oranges. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, these oranges were a gift from the governors of Florida and California. The tour continued until finally they stood before the Gold Room. Totally unaware of what awaited them inside. And this is our royal gold room. Confound it, what's going on in here? Ooh, we captured these crooks to try to steal your gold. Well, bust my bongos if you didn't. You two boys are really chips off the old family block. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed the real first on TV tour. But Mr. Hollywood, what about my paintings? Uh, we don't have time. A real first, the actual capture of two real live desperados caught gold-handed by these... But two... you haven't seen the chandeliers in the rock candy crystal room. Uh, take him away, boys. Uh, captured by these two outstanding nephews. Put me down, confound it! Put the me down! The king's nephews who came to the rescue. Yes, for Duke and Earl had not only saved the royal treasury, but saved the King's TV tour as well. But what new evil did Biggie plot? Don't miss the next adventure of the King and Odie. 
Way out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums. The principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the great lion King Leonardo. Confound it, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. <laughs> One morning, not long ago, King Leonardo was in the Royal Library looking for a book with which to pass a few relaxing hours when he heard a sound that struck fear into his very heart. Uncle Lenny! Uncle Lenny! Uncle Lenny! Uncle Lenny! Great bongos, it's the twins. Oh, where can I hide? It was indeed his two nephews, the twin tornadoes, Duke and Earl, whose approach was enough to make any adult tremble in terror. I think he's in a library. Yeah, let's look. Trapped. Wait a minute. Confound it, wait. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. Can't you two do anything right? Nothing but trouble. Oh, we're very sorry, sir. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, come, let us help his highness up and brush him off. Yeah, up and brush. Now, wait. One, two, three, heave. <laughs> Confound it! Stop that! What's going on here? What are you two doing in those uniforms? We've joined the Bongo Congo Boy Scouts. We do a good turn every day. Yeah, every day. Well, well, well. Now, isn't that nice? I think scouting will do you boys a lot of good. Oh, a great thing, scouting. We're glad you think so, Uncle Lenny, because we want to ask you a favor. Yeah, a favor. A favor? Well, of course. Glad to do anything I can for a couple of fine Boy Scouts. <laughs> uh, what is it, Earl? Ooh, uh, I'm not Earl. I'm Duke. Uh, that's Earl, folks. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, what's the favor you boys want? Well, our patrol leader has the measles, and we want you to take his place. Oh, <laughs> a patrol leader, eh? The Wolf, wolf Patrol! patrol. Oh. oh, great oh. bongos, what's that? Oh, that's our patrol yell. Neat, huh? How about it, Uncle Lenny? Will you do it, will you? Will you, huh? Well, of course, I'll help you out. <laughs> it is the duty of every Bongo Congo citizen to help the youth of the country. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> A million. Yeah, a million. Uh, so, so long. long. <laughs> Patrol leader, eh? Hmm. I always did look good in a uniform. <laughs> and so that afternoon, King Leonardo called in the royal tailor and bought the official Bongo Congo Boy Scout uniform. And he did indeed look splendid. But he was to soon find out that there was a lot more to scouting than a fancy uniform. That night, at the patrol meeting... Now, the first thing we're supposed to work on tonight are our knots. Now, there's really nothing to it. Now, this is a bowling. Just make a loop and take the end and put the end through and flip it around and through and around and through and over and under and through and around and over and... Ooh. Okay, fellas. Leave them up and brush them off. Yeah, brush them off. Wait, confound it, wait! Then again, while helping with a class in first aid, the king got really wrapped up in his subject. But the crowning blow came during the flag signaling class. <laughs> okay, fellas, pick them up and brush them off. By the end of the evening, King Leonardo was not quite as excited about being a patrol leader as he had been and was visibly shaken when Duke told him about the camping trip. Tomorrow morning? Yes, sir. All the patrols are going. It's a contest to see which patrol has the best campers. We'll call for you at six o'clock. Oh. Will King Leonardo lead the scout patrol to victory? What new troubles await him in the great outdoors? We'll find out in the next episode, The King Camps Out. <laughs> Way out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, 
a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums, bongo drums, the principal product of the kingdom. In fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bongo Land. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the Good Lion King Leonardo. Confounded, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. <laughs> Unknown to many in the kingdom, a sinister character named Mr. Mad had come into the king's life. <laughs> Mr. Mad was a collector of different types of people, and he desperately wanted a king for his collection. And so, he had tried many times to capture King Leonardo. Once, he had tried to trap the king while he was sleepwalking. Once, Mr. Mad had tried to capture the king while he was fishing. Yo! And again, while he was out for a spin in his car. Somehow, King Leonardo had always managed to escape. But the constant threats to his safety were greatly upsetting the king. I tell you, Odie, I can't stand much more. Mr. Mad has me so upset, I don't know what I'm doing. No! I see what you mean, sire. We must stop Mr. Mad at once. But how? Remember what my king has always said. The best defense is a good offense. You mean? Exactly, Your Majesty. We must go after the culprit ourselves. But how can we find him? He keeps moving that house of his from one place to another. Itchy Brother and Biggie Rat are always doing Mr. Mad's dirty work. If we find them, we will find Mr. Mad. Bravo, Odie! We'll put on our detective disguises and set out after them. You are pretty good, okay? Open that helmet, you tin head. We can't understand a word you're saying. Uh, my royal brother and Odie Colonia are like uh, going to try and bring you in, Mr. Mad. Bring me in? How? By uh, like uh, disguising themselves and then finding me and Biggie and uh, following us to you. Ah, well, full those wise guys say. We'll just stay hauled up here so they can't find us and... Silence! You will let them find you and follow you here. But that's mad, mad. <laughs> when they arrive here, I shall have a trap set for them. Like, uh, how will you shut your trap, Mr. Mad? Look and see. When the king and Odie are following you, come to the back of the house. There you will find two doors. Be certain you enter the left-hand door and lock it behind you. Then the king and Odie will be forced to enter the right-hand door. Yeah? So what? <laughs> Mr. Mad's plan was diabolically clever. If the king and Odie enter the right-hand door, they would quickly fall through a trap door and land on a large conveyor belt. From this, they would be lifted up by a giant crane. Then they would be dropped onto a moving grating, which Odie was small enough to fall through. The king would then be lifted by a hook and dropped into the cage reserved for a king. Then Odie would be lifted and made ready for the roof. Will the King and Odie follow Biggie and Itchy to Mr. Mad's house? Will they take the right-hand door and fall into the trap? Will Odie really be dropped into the room? We'll find out in the next episode, A Long, Long Trail of Binding. Way out yonder lies the little kingdom of Bongo Congo, a peaceful land where contented natives play contented songs on their contented drums. Bongo drums, the principal product of the kingdom. 
in fact, the only product of the kingdom. Come with us now to Bangoland. From the palace comes the thundering roar of the lion king, Leonardo. Confound it, where's my throne? It's time for my cartoon show. In our last episode, King Leonardo had decided to try and capture the infamous Mr. Man. To do this, the King and Odie planned to find Biggie and Itchy and follow them secretly to Mr. Mad's constantly moving house. But unfortunately, their plan had been overheard by Itchy Brother, who had told Mr. Mad, who said, <laughs> You will let them find you and follow you here. When they arrive here, I shall have a trap set for them. Okay, Mad. We'll go out and let those guys follow us. But remember, when you return, be certain you enter the left-hand door and lock it behind you. The right-hand door will hold the trap for the king and Odie. Yeah, he'll uh, like uh, snap the trap. <laughs> and I shall have a king for my collection. While Biggie and Itchy set out to be found, the King and Odie were hard at work searching for them. Confound it, Odie, we've asked everywhere and nobody remembers seeing them. They're the most unseen pair I've ever seen. As good detectives, sire, we must try to think as the criminals would. Now, if you were Itchy Brother, where would you be? Where would I? Confound it, I wouldn't be Itchy Brother. I know, sire, but look, it is they. You're right, Odie. Now, just act casual. Don't do anything to attract attention. Okay, Itch, they've spotted us. But don't let on that we know, see? Start back to Mad's place, but go slow, see? Yeah, okay, Big, I dig. Yeah, I'll just drop some of this popcorn along the way. It'll, like, uh, leave a trace to the place. Don't let them recognize you, Odie. Walk backwards like I'm doing. But, sire, you might... Confound it! Who put this hole here? Hurry, sire, or we'll lose them. But the King and Odie found Itchy's popcorn trail, and never realizing it led to a trap, they followed the corny trail. All right, Itchy. They'll be along in a minute, see? And let's get inside. Uh, yeah, I... Not that door, knobhead. Mad told us to use the right-hand door. Yeah, he said, uh, left. Right. Left. Right. Left. You don't know your right from your left. Come on. Lock that door, so the King and Odie will have to use the other one. Yeah, okay, Big. It's locked. Now let the... Gee, Big. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are, Big. I saw it. Yow! Yes, the diabolical duo had taken the wrong door and fallen into Mr. Mad's trap. It's us, see? It's, it, it's big and itchy. <laughs> Those disguises can't fool me. I know that's you, Odie Colone. And now it's time for your visit to the room. <laughs> Left-hand door flew open then. Hands up, you villains, in the name of the king. Yes, hands up, in my name. And so all the culprits were captured. But no, once again, as if by magic, Mr. Mad made a clever escape. <laughs> will he be back? What will his next scheme be? Don't miss the next episode of The King and Odie.